Hello everyone, Vlad here. Today my plan is to do some repair work on this Xbox Series 2 Elite controller. Um, now I have previously taken this one apart. Um, I replaced the face plate and also replaced one of the boards inside and the reason I need to repair this one again is because of this bumper button here. It had just stopped working. Um, and it is linked to the board that I replaced previously, but that was with a second hand board from a another controller. So um, this time I've gone a different route and what I do plan on doing is replacing the buffer button completely so that if it's the problem it's the one breaking the board that that gets fixed and the second piece is going to be replacing the board that has the button on it so that um, everything should be functioning once again and hopefully I don't break it immediately. Um, now to do this repair I have gotten some genuine Microsoft parts they started offering these um, on their website earlier this year. Um, when you open it up, you're going to get this little website here. It gives, you can go there. You can download instructions. It also gives you a whole bunch of um, precautionary tales of things to do um, for safety and things like that. Um, and uh, But what I, once I get this open, I have a full new set of buttons. I've got my bumpers, but I've got the whole set. I've got everything from my X, Y, B, and A buttons to my triggers to... Um, even replacement Xbox, a uh, little glowy light for turning on the, the whole thing. So um, got all the buttons there. And then the second part of the repair, uh, which is probably actually the first part of the repair because it's all the way buried at the bottom of the controller. You have to pretty much remove everything to get to it, is this little board here. I believe this is the I.O. board is what Microsoft calls it. It's not the main board, but what it does have are these bumper buttons attached to it. So to get to this, we basically have to remove all the parts from the controller um, to get to it um, and replace it. Um, but this also comes with some extra screws. It comes with some adhesive uh, type stuff um, to replace that if needed when I open that up. Um, so let's take a look at the instructions Microsoft offers on their site so you can get an idea of what that looks like. I won't go into detail of every step because we would be here all day. Um, and then we'll jump into the actual repair itself and hopefully I do it well and don't break anything in the process. Okay, so here I am. I'm on the Microsoft website and I've gone into the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller replacement components page. Um, and it gives you some information about repairing it um, that, you know, does require some technical skill, is suited for enthusiast professionals or those with prior experience with electronic disassembly. Um, you know, it says go slowly if this is your first attempt. Um, you will need some things to do it. It says a plastic pry tool, some screwdriver bits, and some plastic tweezers. I think I've got everything covered but the plastic tweezers. I don't remember needing those last time when I took this apart, so I think I'm good. Um, but it also has a PDF where you can download all of the instructions. And there's also some video instructions. I haven't checked those out, but those are there. Um, and then this has some things where it talks about all the different um, replacement options that are available. And then this is the PDF. Uh, it goes over a bunch of disclaimers and um, you know, then it has, well, let's get into the meat of things. Uh, the, it's got a step-by-step -step for removing the top case and reinstalling, moving the frame, the bumper replacement, battery replacement, main board replacement, IO board, which is the one I need to do, and then button. So it has all of these nestled in here and it's got some pictures and screenshots along the way that kind of help you see what they're doing in each step. Um, so these are basically what I'll be following, though I will be probably using some of my prior experience to uh, to navigate this without having to go back to the instructions every second. Um, but these look uh, pretty promising, so I'm, I'm glad that they didn't only make the parts, but they've also taken the time to make some decent instruction manuals. And um, if you want to do this on with yours, um, just to note that they do say this will not void the warranty. However, you do need to know that if you break anything during the process, then the warranty won't cover the parts you broke yourself. So um, if you're doing this, making the replacement, um, and if it's something that should be covered under warranty, then I just suggest sending it into Microsoft. Um, unless you're just really attached to your controller, you don't want them to send you a replacement one. 
Um, I see no reason to not use their service if you're still in warranty, because again, if you break something along the process, then that won't be covered in the warranty. It's only going to cover the, the warranty of the parts um, that are in the controller, and then you should, they, I think they also have a warranty for the replacement part if it goes bad, but um, if, if you're under warranty, do yourself a favor, just have Microsoft fix it or send you a replacement and then you don't have to worry about that aspect of it. But if you want to get uh, crafty, you want to take the time to learn a little bit more about your controller, then um, then go for it. Just be careful as you go, because um, this is an expensive controller, and you don't want to have to pay for it again out of pocket if you don't have to. Okay, so here we are with the controller, and I need to um, pull off the top case. So uh, the there are, let me show you on, this is an older top case that I did save. Um, so what we have to get is these little tabs released from the inner frame, the bottom case. And you need to be careful because um, they are breakable. Like this one is missing the tooth, so that one broke off at some point. I think that was from me dropping the controller um, and not me breaking it during the takeoff process. But there's little teeth, these little connectors around the entire um, controller that we need to get released so that we can remove this top case and start the repair process. Um, another thing to note is to remove all of your removal buttons. So remove the thumbsticks, remove the D-pad uh, magnetic buttons. Um, that way they're not in the way as you try and take things off. So let's see if we can get in here without me breaking the case. Okay, so this is, seems to be the better option as far as getting underneath here. I was able to slide that around. I heard some poppings. This is, I got a little bit of space here. All right, so I'm just gonna go around and kind of lightly pull up as I go around the controller from this point onwards. Um, be careful, there may be some wires really close to the edge. You don't wanna necessarily grab hold of those, so just barely go under the lip and give it a nice little lift. Um, if you end up bending your plastic thing, switch to a new side. All right, let's see if I can. Nope, don't want that to happen. All right, so if it turns on, you're supposed to fully discharge this battery before you start the repair. Um, if it comes on and you didn't do that, make sure you turn it off. You don't want power coming through this thing. Um, with exposed motherboards and stuff, because then that's when you can uh, have the electricity jump um, if you accidentally make that uh, bridge of connection. Okay, we're almost on the home front. Um, this looks like... There we go. So let's lift this off. Um, I was good. I, I haven't broken any of the teeth here. All right, so, so far so good. This piece is off. Now we have our buttons. And um, the next step is going to be to remove these screws here. And I don't remember what size they are, so once I figure that out, I will let you know. Um, so let's see. Driver. Try this. I think it said eight, maybe. Aha! That seems to want to work. So this is the star one with the little center hole. Um, you, I don't know if I can get close enough to you tell, but um, these little screws have that little metal piece in the center. So if you just have the star, that's not gonna work. Uh, you need the ones that the screwdriver with the, um, I don't know if it's, with the hole in the center so that you can get around that. All right, so we need to remove these screws. And that should release everything from the, um, the lower frame. If I'm not mistaken. 
Um, this is your first time opening up the controller. There will probably be there will be a little blister type sticker here um, that you will have to lift off to be able to um, get to that screw. Um, get yourself something to put the screws in so you don't lose them. Last thing you want is to have a bunch of screws floating around that you then knock onto the floor. I think that's all of them, but I'm going to give it another quick look. Um, yeah. Um, let's just consult before I start pulling on things. All right, so yes, we got those screws removed. All right, so at this point it says we should be able to lift the mid frame. So I'm going to, let's see if we can, there we go. All right, so if you do what I'm doing to be able to get this free, just be careful. Keep an eye out what's underneath. You don't necessarily want to pry on something you shouldn't be. I didn't say I needed to remove anything there, but all right. Okay, so this motor fell out of its little housing. All right, so we've got this bottom piece here um, that has the battery in it and the connection boards for our underneath controller uh, buttons. Um, we're going to move those, move this out of the way for now. Okay. All right, so now we have to move on to exposing that secondary board. And this is where I forget where I was, so let's consult real quick with the instructions. All right, so the first step is going to be removing these upper trigger um, buttons which pretty simple uh, we just need to lift up the there's it's not really a flap but it's, it's this little thing that goes over a notch okay so that's done and then there is a thing we need to release over here. All right, so it says the clips of the bumper are fragile. Be careful not to push too hard, far, so you can snap the clips. Um, point it in the plastic part to unhook the edge clips on the right and left bumper. So. Okay, so there's this, it's hard to tell from that distance, isn't it? All right, so there's this, the little bumper sits in there. We need to pop this out on both sides without breaking the whole thing. Now, I have replacement buttons, so it's not that big a deal. I sh should be able to replace it if I do it. Um, but, uh, and then here's the part that I had to flip over. There's this little, um little tab that those holes go over you just have to flip that up so these this is actually pretty simple um, it's just being a little gentle with these uh, trigger buttons so that we don't completely destroy them there we go okay so that release so there's this faceplate which is what had our little um, holes that had to come over. And then we have the actual triggers right here. Um, what that has exposed is the button here. Um, later on, this might come flying out. I forget, um, but we just need to remember that there are a bunch of buttons that are here um, that may start to come out as we move forward. So we're going to flip this over. This is where our next set of work is going to come from. Um, and what we need to do is detach these two wires from the board. Luckily, that is not hard and it doesn't require any soldering experience. And that is a really thick pry tool. 
Um, so I'm going to come underneath these, probably with my finger, fingernail. Okay. I'm going to get up close as I can with this uh, phone. So this is the wire I just unhooked. It go, has a little channel that these wires are going into. And then it has this little circular connection point. That's just a pressure connection. It look has probably some little teeth that catch it. And we have to remove this one over here. And then um, when we remove this top board, um, we'll need to remove, take these wires out of this channel um, because we're going to be replacing this entire board um, as part of my uh, repair here. So we're going to do that. Um, so let me do that. But that's a close up so you can see what's going on here. All right, that one is free. So I'm going to um, lift this thing up. Just be careful with these wires. Um, so, all right, so we've, we've unhooked those. And the next piece I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the wires from here. I'm going to leave those wires in the channel. Um, I could pull them out, but it's putting a lot of tension on it. And that's a really thin wire. And the thing I don't want to have to do is find a way to replace that wire. Because I did not see one in my replacement kit. So the last thing I want to do is have to find another one. Or make my own, which it's not going to be great because it requires soldering with this to the heads of these this one. So we do that, then those become loose here, and now I don't have to worry so much about um, breaking these wires. They're completely free. They'll separate with the board. So we'll see if my replacement board comes with one of those or not. Um, the next thing to do is we're going to have to loosen up this board here. Now... Um, the instructions will tell you that you can re to, to unsolder these motors and um, to go from there. But I don't want to unsolder these motors and then resolder them back together. They aren't as easy as these little push ones here to get in. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do this without um, unsoldering those. You just have to be careful because these do weigh a lot. So if you drop them on, you know, into just where these wires are supporting them, expect the connection to possibly break. All right, so uh, we've got some screws on this board that need to be removed in order to get this repair. So let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. This is a T5, I think. Which one we need? It says it's a T6. So let's see, I should have a T6. Hmm. I'm going to try this one, see how it goes. That one's too big. Okay, the five works, so I'm going to use it. So we got a screw there. Now, this one, if it'll focus, you can see there's no metal piece in the center. Um, so you can use a solid, solid bit to get these out. Um, but the ones with the hole will still work. Um, if that's all you got. <laughs> okay, this is, okay, so we're going to skip some Microsoft steps. We're going to go into the, the Vlad steps. Um, what we need to do next is take these, these caps off. So 
if you put on your thumbstick again, you can twist these. And since I've done it, this comes off fairly easy. But if it's your first time, you might have to put a little effort in it. There is a little bit of like um, glue that they put on. So I'm going to pull that off. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. All right, those are now off. Okay, so those are those, and then we removed those screws already, but I'm just going to pull these out of their housing. Alright, so I'm actually going to put these back in, because it's going to help me make sure I don't put any extra tension on these wires. So I'm going to slide them up a little, but they're not going to be fully out of here. It says we should be able to lift up on this board now. Just got to be careful. Okay. So a couple things as you lift this board out. There's this uh, bar here, and there's this bar here. This whole board slides up and over these things. So they may, you know, if you don't lift it kind of straight, then you're going to be kind of at an angle and it's going to put tension on these bars and it's going to make it harder to get this thing out. So just keep an eye on that. Um, maybe you can slide a fingernail underneath here or a pry tool so you can try and lift these relatively even so that it slides up like this. Um, and this is as far as I'm going to remove this board. Uh, it's going to allow me access to this lower one here. Um, something also to note is that this, once once the tension is removed by the screws and you lifting up this board, this just freely floats out. This is your headphone jack. All right, so move this over to the side, but don't forget to put it back in. <laughs> and um, don't forget to remember which way it goes in. It, does, it goes in um, just like that. So, um, it's an important piece of your controller if you use the headphones regularly. Uh, if you leave it open, you're going to have a hole that can allow dust and stuff in. So, you want it there either way. Um, but just remember it's there. Um, and we're good to go. We're going to move on to removing the screws that hold in this backboard and uh, go from there because I don't want to undo the wiring from, I don't want to undo the wiring from these channels in my process and I don't want to move these things around a lot to where I'm getting tension on the soldering points inside the controller. All right, making good progress. Uh, let's see. All right, we can continue with the same um, screwdriver bit that we had that we removed the screws from this board on the lower one. Now this lower one is probably hard to see but there's really only two screws there's one near the bear's foot over here and there's one over here near the motor and so I'll double check but those those are the only two screws for that board so if I remove those it all should come undone Once you've done that, everything should lift out. Just note that the bottom edge of this, the bottom edge of this blue board is still over this bar. So you will have to get it over that. Um, so lifting it evenly um, will help make that process easier. Uh, so let me get some place that's stable for me. Uh, it also helps, I guess, to lift from that corner start off with. Alright, so since I didn't remove this board, I'm going to have to maneuver this one out from underneath, but that's easy enough. So here we go. Let me gather up that screw. So here's our board. This is the one we're replacing. 
Um, if I look up underneath here, this is where I have, I need, this is the wire that I unhooked, so I'm going to keep that over there. Uh, but this is now we have access to all of these buttons um, that are underneath here. So we could replace the Xbox button, we could replace our center buttons and stuff. I don't think I need to go through all of that with this one. Um, the main piece I wanted to replace is this set of buttons here. Um, because for some reason, this uh, this bumper just continues to go bad, um, even, even after I replaced the board once. So I'm going to take these wires out. Now that I have it free, I can kind of work on these wires a little bit better. Uh, maybe even pull back these clamps a little so I can get that wire out a little bit better without pulling on it so much because I think I may need those for the replacement and then here's here's the actual buttons that control the bumpers and for some reason uh, this one keeps going bad on me no idea why all right and good news everybody this one comes with brand new wires so my um, my little uh, worriness about getting new wires or having to worry about pulling on those too much is a little is is not needed. Um, these come with the new wires in there, so we should be able to pop this into place and uh, be good to go. Get that connection back onto the board, put that on top, and then we'll worry about replacing these upper bumpers with the fresh ones. Um, and we should be good moving along pretty quick. This isn't terribly hard uh, so far. And uh, just be careful when you're removing wires, and I think you'll be pretty good. Okay, here I am with the uh, controller, and if this it seems a little bit weird with the editing, I was moving along, and then I started to have a few issues, um, and I realized where my issue was, um, and I want to give you good instructions instead of half-assed ones. Um, so here's my boards. I've got the this one out. Um, this is my replacement new one that's going to go be going back in here. Um, and uh, the thing is when you're trying to get everything back together is gravity is holding all these buttons in place so like here's the Xbox one you can see I can move it with my finger so if you start working on this and you are trying to set this on the table guess what's gonna happen all these buttons are gonna start to move out of place so we need to make sure these buttons get set into their little cubby holes and aren't flipped around and things. Um, and that's hard to do with this board in, but I'm doing it because I don't want to unsolder stuff. So I'm going to remove this little um, gray piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to make sure that all my buttons are set uh, where they need to be. They're not off kilter, they're not twisted in the wrong way, they're not upside down. Um, and to do that I'm gonna have to kind of move this out of frame so I can see above me. So you know you can lift it above your head. Um, you can't see it but I can tell that my Y button is turned 90 degrees. It no longer says Y. Um, so I'm gonna have to flip that around so that that button is where it should be. Let's see if that did it. Okay, now my Y button is correct. Um, my select button my, and stuff are all in the right spot. So that's good. Um, there's this other button up top here. Um, maybe it'll, yeah, let's zoom it in, okay. Um, so you can see it has the little circular notch up at the top. And this is like the little, um, let's um, pair our controller button. And that slides into this channel right here. It may fall out at any point in time. Again, these are just gravity held in at the moment. So if I were to flip this upside down, all of my buttons would start to fall out. So you don't want that to happen. Be mindful of it as you move forward and this other board is out because that was what was holding all those in place. Um, so to get around me setting this flat on the table, I've gotten this little piece of Tupperware and I'm going to use it to kind of suspend the controller across. All right, and that's just going to allow those buttons to hang while I get this board back in place. Once it's in place, I don't have to worry so much. Um, it, it'll be held in the way it's supposed to. Um, so this needs to go back in like this and then this button 
I was hanging in there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yep, there's little notches so you can kind of remind yourself if you need to. Like, how do the buttons go in? Well, um, see this button? It's got those three little notches on it. So, unless those three little notches are in spot, then it's not seated correctly. So, you just need to make sure it's seated correctly. So, that's how I could tell if I have this one facing the right direction. There's a little thick tab there, and there's a little tiny one over there. So, now I know I've got this in the right direction. So, we're going to slide that into place, and then bump this... Uh, Plastic ones in there. Okay, I think I did that okay. Let's just still make sure it didn't screw anything. I messed up the Y button again. Why won't you work with me? Come on. There you go. I knew you wanted to help me. It's easy to have fat fingers with this. I lost my pairing button again. Okay, I think we're okay now. Okay, the Y button really, really doesn't want to work with me today. Every time I set the Y button, it goes wrong. And then when I get everything else into place, I've somehow screwed up the Y button again. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. All right, all my buttons are where they should be. So I'm going to suspend this so that I hopefully don't screw them over again. All right, so I'm going to get this back in place. Uh, the one thing I need to remember with that my headphone jack. I started putting this back together once. Guess what I forgot? A headphone jack. So, um, before the headphone jack, I need to get this in there. I'm going to gingerly lift this back out. Slide this underneath. I'm going to push these wires up so that they don't go underneath this green board. When you're reinstalling the blue bare board, I.O. board, I believe as it's called, make sure that you get the board to go over this pin here. There's a pre-drilled hole. Nothing special to do. Just make sure that you drop it over the top of that. Okay, I'm give my buttons one last look. Buttons are looking good. So I just there's one screw that needs to go into that hole there. And then that board will be in. And then I won't have to worry about most of those buttons um, because the board will be in place and the screw will be helping make sure that things do not move around on me. All right, so let's see if we can move that to where I can see. Okay, cool. So that is done. Um, we've got the blue board installed. We just need to slide this board back over the top. That's where we need to make sure that this goes in. This is the bottom. And this with all the little gold connections coming out are um, is the top. Should be facing up. So I'm going to slide that into a slot there. And then I'm going to slide this board back over the pins. Those pins are located one here and one here. It goes back on much easier than it did trying to come off. All right, so there should be a screw that goes there and a screw that goes there that will hold this in place. Um, when you're putting this in place, just make sure you're not pinching any of these wires that are coming across for our motors and we should be good. Down. 
And just be careful when you're putting in screws and you're putting these boards back in place. There should not be any crazy tension. You shouldn't be seeing the board bend and warp um, like a rainbow or anything like that. So if that's the case with yours, then we need to double check that we're not doing something incorrectly because there shouldn't be a whole lot of pressure on this board. Um, I'm getting a little bit of pressure, but that's because these wires that I didn't want to go under the green board ended up under the green board. So let's see if we can get them out of there. There we go. That's solved. All right, let's put in this last screw. Okay, and then I forgot to put that screw in there near the bear's foot, so we'll get that in and make sure everything's good to go. That's a good thing also about making sure that your screws are organized. If you end up with an extra one, then you know you forgot to put one in, and then that you didn't lose it. All right, so uh, these are already connected up here, but we do need to get this board connected to this board. So that's where it comes into the compression part. So we have to get these to snap over these little circles with a little dot in the middle. And we got two of them. The wire should line up in that channel, but it doesn't take much. All right, that one snapped into place. Nope, it's somewhat snapped into place. Okay, let's get this down here. Okay, got that one in place. Made a nice little snapping noise. It's all about the alignment, I think. All right, there we go. Now they're in place, they're secure. They are moving. I was able to get them in there with my fingernail. They made a little nice, satisfying little snap when I put them in. Um, and then I'm just going to make sure this kind of moves into its channel there. And then uh, put this sticker back down that kind of protects that. Make sure I don't get the foam. I'm going to double check. I don't think they gave me any, any replacement for those, but I'm just going to double check. Hmm. Nope, no replacement for that that I see. Okay, so I grabbed myself a little electrical tape. I'm just going to use that to fasten that down there. Let's double check. I want to make sure that. Yep, okay. Yep. So I'm just going to use that to help hold that down. Okay, so there we go. Um, we got this board back, the blue board's in place. All of our buttons are where they should be here uh, which is good uh, note there's the, these little plastic pieces that are here um, that kind of sit in those little channels uh, where the triggers end up um, they're actually supposed to sit well i'm gonna have to go find that one uh, these these little plastic pieces these were sitting like this when we looked at it but what they should be doing is sitting like that where they're between the little white button there and the black part of the frame um, and then the little um, bumper button kind of comes in here and taps on that So now that one's in place, so those are good. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing we removed are these, so I'm going to put them back on. I will get them started with my fingers, but then we'll go back to our trusty thumbstick to get them twisted on. And I'm not going to go too tight, you know, I'm just going to go to where it feels firm. And 
the biggest thing here is making sure they're going on straight. You don't want to strip out the screw by, you know, trying to force these to go down diagonal or anything. So if when you first put them on, it immediately feels tight, then that means you're at the wrong angle. Um, so I suggest, you know, taking it off and then reseating it and making sure that's all good. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that these, these are... Um, these are our motors, so I'm just going to make sure that they are seated fully and that I get these wires out of the way. All right, cool. All right, um, I think the next thing is going to be to set this back into the case. I don't remember. Let's, let's stop for a second, and let's remember. I'm pretty sure this needs to go back into the case. Okay, so now our boards are back in place. This is taped down, and... Um, we need to move on to the next step of the process. Um, now, uh, what we need to do is get these buttons in place. These are my replacement ones, and they're quite simple. Uh, you have a notch here that needs to slide into this compartment here. There's one on both sides, one for e each side of the controller. And then there's a hole on the end here, a notched little thing and uh, you have to get it over that little clip there so uh, the first part is going to be to just align this appropriately as long as you got this center part aligned there that'll be fine so push that forward and then just give this a little push like you're going to press the button it should snap right into place All right now that that's in place we can give this a little press is there anything causing an issue this wire seems to be a little bit in the way Okay, I'm getting good response from that. Just making sure that's all good. All right, cool. Now we need to get the faceplate. Now just know that if you buy the buttons, this faceplate doesn't come with them. Be careful, be gentle with these tabs up at the top. Um, these will slide underneath our bottom case when we put that in there. So uh, we just need to get this over the top here. Okay, like so, not terribly hard. And this will slide under our case when we're done, but we got our charging port in the right place, we got our pairing button in the right place. Um, double check all of our buttons. These all seem to be functioning correctly. Triggers, triggers work. All right, the triggers get to have a little bump stop here. They can overextend when this is not in place, so they should now be in a comfortable, like, normal game playing position. And we just need to slide this into our case here. Should go fairly easily, like so. And before we put in the screws, we're going to give this another test. Thumbsticks are working fine. These all have good springiness to them. These are all pressing the way they should. Oh, that feels really good. Um, nice clickiness out of them. All right, so we're gonna put the screws in here and then we just need to put on our top case and we should be home free. We'll have to test it out and make sure we didn't screw anything up. Um, all right, so screws. All right, let me get this out of the way. This in a better position. Okay, so now this is where we're going back to the one with the hole at the bottom because all of our screws have that little post in them. And you don't need to torque these to where they're like, they just need to hold things in place. They don't need to go for like a crazy ride down a dirt track type. go too tight you might end up breaking something stripping something you don't want that I'm using the original screws but the repair kit did come with replacement screws 
at least a few of them in case something went wrong with it. Okay, now you could just take this top case and just snap it back on. Um, the kit does come with some replacement adhesive, so if we look at this old version, you can see where this adhesive goes. Uh, one on either side here, and then a couple up here. Um, this is where the sticky is still remaining there. Um, these aren't very tacky at the moment. Um, but I don't think I need that to be there. It's not really going to do anything. These uh, the snaps on the edge of this are going to do well. I may have torqued that one a little too much taking it off. Um, but it should still be fine. Um, so we're going to snap this on. And we should all be good. So the key here, just be gentle. When you hear it snap into place, you should be good. All right, that's there. These feel good, thumbsticks work. All the buttons feel smooth like they should. Okay, I think that's it put back together and that's the uh, Xbox repair. Um, now we'll have to put this onto the console, pair it, um, and uh, just make sure everything's working as intended. Okay guys, uh, the repair went pretty well after I refreshed myself on how everything was working. And uh, I have it connected to my Xbox now. I've got the Xbox Accessories app open in test mode, so I should be able to test if all these buttons are working now. The one we were worried about was my bumper, my um, right bumper, so let's start with that one. And that one is currently working. Um, let's try the trigger. Right trigger is working. Left trigger is working. That bumper is working. All right, we got our thumbstick. Seems to be doing well. The right one also. All right, A is functioning. X is functioning. Y is functioning. B is functioning. And um, we got our D-pad. All right, that's functioning. All right, and our center buttons are all functioning. So we're all good. Um, this controller is responding. It's recording all of our buttons. There's no delay. Um, all of the presses feel natural and unrestrained. So uh, I think our repair went well. I'm going to be able to play with this controller once again. Uh, if something goes wrong, I will be sure to leave a update comment on the video. Um, but for now, I don't see anything going haywire. Um, so I'm quite happy with how the repair turned out. And um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.